All right, welcome to Four Against Darkness. So this is going to be a little bit different. I recorded what normally would be the intro, and then about halfway through decided that needs to just be an outro piece So I, cause, because I talk a lot about my opinions about it and everything. So I'm going to make this as quick and to the point to get right into the game as I can. Number one, I struggled reading the book, and I'm going to do the best I can. I'm sorry if this is your favorite game, and I am horrible at representing how it's going to going to going to really play. I'm going to try. Uh, so that said, I wrapped up all my thoughts and little stories and everything at the end of this. I don't know, obviously, how my fourth foray into this is going to go. I am not going to probably rely on the actual physical book here. I am probably going to try to rely mostly on the PDF so that you know you all can see what I've got on the screen here. So. Real quick off the top, this is Four Against Darkness. It's one of those games that you just see everybody talking about when they t when they talk about solo dungeon crawl games. It's it's one of the big three I kept running into. So I I will have physical books of of all three of these big th three that I keep uh, running across here soon. I mean I have the D100 one. You've seen that video probably. Now I have this, and 2D6 Dungeon is on the way. So. Let's get started making some characters. So I the, the the default character sheet for this game is not helpful to me. I didn't care for it, so um, I found some online and ultimately wound up with with something that I love. Um, I, I I have this here, and I'm gonna use this, and I'm just going to to fill this out here, maybe with pencil and then we'll take a break before we actually jump in and then we will we will we will dive into the adventure so let's see what's going on here maybe that shouldn't be in the in the center of the screen let me uh let me think about moving that maybe i move that off to the side Ooh. oh no i'm on the side Ooh. i'm so used to being on the other side how funny let me make sure so i found that well maybe that does work maybe that works okay we'll keep that right there we'll keep that right there this way you can see me, not that anybody would want to. I can see you, no I can't. I can see the board, I can see these guys. This is what's important. So my understanding is, and keep in mind that, that I am not a professional at, at Four Against Darkness, I struggled with this. And I'll tell you all about that at the end of this video. So the classes that we get to choose from are Warrior, right, we're gonna have four. Cleric, Rogue, Wizard, Barbarian, Elf, Dwarf and Halfling. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just do what I'm kind of familiar with here. We're going to start out with a dwarf, right? So I'm going to write on my character sheet. You can all play at home along with me here. So I'm going to write... Oh, I'm not even going to write... Oh, should I give them names? We should give them some generic names. I wasn't going to do it, but I do have a, a party I use. So this is going to be my boy Ripgar. He is my party leader in every single RPG or any game I ever play. Class. His class is a dwarf. This is a little old school level one okay so we're halfway there for one character already what do we got here dwarves have plus one to defense again so i'm gonna write plus one versus i'm gonna put this in my little i have a defense and attack i don't have a graphic for this for you but basically i had to make this myself to where it had little reminders in it and in my current version i do have the the maximum gold of 200 already printed on it but i didn't when i printed this out for today's efforts. So I have a name, a class, I can write their level. Clues, I think you only get three, and then when you do, you get something and you get to roll to level up. So that's why I put a little XP in there as a little reminder. Um, I have a spot for whoever's carrying my group lantern. Uh, quest, I wrote in a little box. Now, I'm not sure how any of this works. I just found these little things on other people's created character sheets. So I just made my own, so it had a little, little couple more hints for me on it. Uh, and then you get to let, roll for uh, experience. If you complete a quest, I guess, you can carry at most 200 gold. You can bandage once. So I drew a little band, or I got a, I did, I totally did, drew this with a little band aid. And uh, you can check it off or fill in the circle if you've been healed once with bandages. I've got maximum hit points in the big red. Uh, your, uh, and then your hit point total pool, like, you know, uh, in the little black down there. So, so a red will be current hit points, right? For my uh, overall attack, I want to be able to just glance at it. So that's what the big attack is for. The W's are weapons. So maybe I have a weapon in both hands, or maybe I just have one in one hand, and I'll write a plus one or, or nothing in there or whatever, or a minus one or whatever. And then any little extra stuff, A and S is armor and shield. And then the rest is just a bunch of lines so I can keep track of, you know, what they're carrying and what spells they know. So I'm going to write plus one versus uh what do i got here plus one versus uh defense oh that's defense roll plus one to attack against goblins so i'm gonna roll plus one versus defense against trolls ogres and giants so trolls 
Then you have to write very small ogre and giants. And then plus one attack versus what? Goblins. I hate goblins, right? Okay, so there's that. Then dwarves are natural goldsmith and gem experts. See here, dwarves are extremely attached to their gold. Let's see, total let's say we can we can smell gold and jewels, right? So that's an ability. So I'm gonna write that smell gold and jewels. Just gonna write that down, right? So it's a roll a die and add the dwarf's level. If the total is six orbitals, so it's like d6 plus l. Six plus, I get to sniff out what their treasure is. I'll probably never use that. <laughs> uh, dwarves are extremely attached to their gold. A party with two or more dwar dwarves may not bribe monsters. We're only going to have one dwarf in this party. Uh, when you find treasure that can be split, you must always assign at least one coin to every dwarf in the party. So I'm going to write always a gold loot. Okay? These are just things I have to remember. Uh, let's see here. Dwarves are natural goldsmiths and gem. Let's uh, see. When you sell a gem or jewelry, if you have a dwarf in the party, you're paid 20% more for the gem. So hold on. Dwarves are natural goldsmith and gem experts. When you sell a gem or jewelry item, if you have a dwarf in the party, you're paid 20% more for the gem, but not the jewels? I, I'm going to assume that means both, right? So gems, because they mention it, plus jewelry sell plus 20 percent okay fine armor allowed i can wear a shield a light armor and heavy armor weapons allowed i can wield anything starting equipment light armor now i don't do you have to buy i don't think you buy this this is just what you start with which is why i kind of feel like if you lose all of your starting gear and you come back out of the dungeon and go to town like between runs you not only get a free like healing but maybe, uh, like, like hit points, maybe not so much, you know, if you're petrified or something, but maybe you get your starting gear back for free. Maybe, like, the town's bulk are just handing out their test, you know, there's a new blacksmith in town, and he's trying to get customers. So he's making, you know, daggers and axes for free. Try out his new stuff. Uh, starting equipment. So, so it says starting equipment. So I start with, right, light armor. So I have light armor, and we have... Uh, a shield and a hand weapon. So I'm going to write shield. Okay. And then hand weapon is going to be an axe, which I'm going to say is a slashing hand weapon. So I have these three things. Starting wealth, 3d6 gold pieces. Hot diggity. This is my favorite part, getting stuff. All right. So what do we got? Do we got uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 there? Okay. So we're going to start with 12 gold. Okay. So gold, 12 out of my 200. Perfect. Life, five plus level, a first level dwarf has six hit points. Okay, that's all well and good and all, but there's no stats on the gear for that, so we'll get to that in a second. Next up, we're going to make a... where are we here? Cleric. We're going to make a cleric. This is a Celeste. Celeste is going to roll in the front of the party with my uh, dwarf, right? So she is going to be a cleric. So she is a cleric. She is going to start at level one, and cleric adds half of her level rounded down to attack rolls. Right, so, oh, does my dwarf add anything to, did I mess that up? Let's see, dwarf. Um, let's see, dwarf adds his level to attack rolls except when using ranged weapon like bows or slings. I did miss that, okay. So then I'm gonna write plus level in here. Okay, I'm just gonna put a plus L so that maybe these are like little reminders of what happens in my, my combat, right? So hopefully I don't mess up. So let's go back to the cleric now, right? A cleric, uh, half level rounded down. So plus half L. And then it's for, uh, let's see, full level when attacks undead. So plus L versus undead. Man, that's a small little box. Okay. <laughs> so, so right now that's a plus zero on the attack. Armor allowed. We have light armor, heavy armor, shield. Okay. Weapons allowed. Hand weapon, two-handed weapon, and sling. All I care about is light armor, uh, heavy armor. That's nice. And a shield. So start. let's jump over to this. Starting equipment. I'm going to do that now, right? Light armor. So light armor. And then we have what? Shield? That's, that's, that's important, right? Uh, light armor, shield, and a hand weapon. So shield... And a mace. We're going to say a mace, which we're going to say is crushing hand 
weapon. Okay. Um, let's see here. The cleric may trade in his shield and hand weapon for a two-handed weapon. I don't want that. I need some shields. I like that. Uh, clerics per may per usually prefer crushing because the chances of meeting skeletons and skeletal rats in dungeons are pretty high. Starting wealth, a d6 in gold. We've got a four gold. Okay, four gold. Um, life, four plus level. A first level cleric has five life. So it's not hit points, it is life. Okay. So we are going to also say, so now I gotta read all the spells thing here. See, it does say, it does say spell in there, not just like cleric ability. So a cleric may cast the blessing. So I'm gonna write blessing. Blessing. Uh, blessing here is what? Three times per adventure. So I'm gonna fill in my little like center pips that tell me that we have blessing three. A cleric may use the healing power. It's not a spell, even though it's in a spell section. Healing power. Oddly enough, it does say power. Okay, three times per game. So, you know, you like how they switch from game to adventure in there, right? I'm going to put a little mark above so that I remember. So that if I re have to reset the character, I have a little arrow as a reminder that that's where it resets to, right? Does that all make sense? Oops. Okay, three times. The power allows a cleric to heal a number of life points equal to D6 plus his level. So it's D6 plus L is for healing. Uh, you can do that at any moment, even during a fight, but may not attack on the same turn in which she heals someone. A cleric may use healing on herself or on a friend. When clerics cast spells from scrolls, they add their level only if the spell being cast is blessing. In all other cases, the spell from the scroll is cast as if the clerics were level one. So, like, the ability is blessing on scroll plus level, I guess. Okay, but otherwise it's not. It's just too bad, so sad. Good luck with that. All right, so we're going to jump ahead. I think I like the idea of a rogue. So let's take a rogue. Uh, let's see here. Rogue. We're going to call you Lita. We are my rogue, like like Lita Ford, but spelled different. <laughs> uh, rogue, R O. Let's see, R O G U E. Rogue level one. Uh, a rogue adds his level. Let's see, her level on rolls to disarm traps and to her defense rolls. A rogue adds her level on rolls to disarm traps. So disarm traps, disarm traps plus level. And then on defense is plus level. That's good to know. Okay, All right, to her defense rolls. A rogue adds her level to his attack rolls only when attacking outnumbered minions. So that's plus L when minion outnumbered. That's worded weird, but that's how it is. Okay. Armor allowed, light armor, weapons allowed, light weapon, and a sling, starting equipment. So we have a rope. Lock picks. Now, I don't know um, how the locked door system works. That is listed as an optional rule in the book. So I think for this play, I'm just going to ignore it for now. But if this is something I play in the future, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start tacking on rules, which I kind of think just my base level, I have no idea what I'm doing, understanding of this game. I'm a noob. I really am. I have no idea what's going on here. I have just this one book. Is that there's a many, many, many books for this, and many of them are adventures, which are probably super awesome and where this where this really shines. But some of them are supplements to the rules. Like I think this only covers level one through four, but then there's a book that that allows five through nine. Then there's a book that's like ten through twenty. Then there's a book with uh, different creatures, like for harder fights and blah 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 blah. I could go on for days about what I think about this game. Starting equipment, rope, lock picks, um, light armor. So we have light armor to start, light armor. Okay, we have light armor and a light hand weapon. So we're gonna take a dagger. Now we're gonna write light, L-H-W, light hand weapon is slashing. Okay, right next to it. That's what we're gonna write. Starting wealth, three, hey, we're gonna start out rich. We got two guys with 3d6. Uh, so we're gonna have nine plus, oh, we're gonna have 15 gold. Wow, look at that. 15 gold to start. We was rolling. All right, and then life, three plus level. A first level rogue has four life. Okay, look at us cruising right through. So then we're gonna have a wizard, and this is, this is, I'm using all my, let's see, this is Magistress. She is a wizard, level one. 
Life is two plus level, so she only has three hit points to start. Gold, let's see here, 46. Holy smoke, she is loaded. All right, so then we have, oh my goodness, what do we have here? Uh, is that 15? What do we got? We got five and nine, right? Yeah, five uh, plus four is nine plus six is going to be 15 gold. We're going to have a good amount of money to start with. Okay. And then what are we missing here? So starting equipment, light hand weapon. So we're going to say you have a staff, which is L H W that is crushing, let's say. Okay, light hand. We also start with a spell hyphen book and writing implement. So we got a we got a we got a nice fancy quill here. Let's see, writing. Just put uh, I M P L E M E N T S. It does fit. Look at that. Okay. All right. So now uh, we have armor allowed none. No armor. No armor at all. That is something we have to remember about our characters. A wizard begins the game with two spells plus one spell per level. So a first level wizard has three spells. Okay. Uh, so spells equals. Uh, two plus L. Okay, I'm just going to write that above where I keep track of all my little spells and everything, just so that I can never have to forget, right? <laughs> so I can never have to forget. Uh, let's see here. The wizard must decide which spells he has prepared before starting the adventure. She may prepare multiple copies of the same spell. I love it. You know what that is? That's spell memorization. Or any combination of the six spells... Uh, wait, she must. She may prepare multiple copies of this. Oh, so I can take three fireballs. Okay, uh, spells allowed in the game. A wizard may find additional spells in adventures and add them to her repertoire of spells that she can prepare. Spells acquired when leveling up may be used immediately. Okay, so then that means we have to hop over to the spell list and take a look here. Now, healing is not a spell, even though I think on the cleric page it said spells. We know it to be called healing power. So I tacked that on to this list so I can reference it later on. So the spells are blessing, fireball, light, is that right? Yeah, right? Uh, it said six, right? Didn't it say six wherever we just were? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. No, it doesn't say. Or any combination of the six spells allowed in the game. So, um, wait, what? Spells when acquire, let's see, find spells, add them to the a wizard may find additional spells. I don't know what that means. So I th anyway, I think like are there is there another spell table I didn't find somewhere? Maybe. Uh, okay, or maybe that's like for future proofing. Like in other books, there's like different spells you can find on scrolls and then copy them down to your spell book or whatever. I dig the like old school style of this a bit. I, I was never a fan of the dwarf as a class, elf as a class thing. I was always like race class guy. I, I definitely preferred that system more. But I dig I dig a lot of the other stuff. Uh, from the the older like D&D style stuff like spell memorization and what I don't even have any idea how it works beyond second edition to tell you the truth So who knows maybe it's like mana points and video games and stuff now. I have no clue uh, so we can take uh, we can't do We can't do Wait a second the spell blessing is considered a spell though. So we could learn blessing. Oh, I didn't realize that I didn't realize that at all at first, actually. So, wow. Okay, wait a second. That changes things. Like, having a mage, being a wizard, rather, being able to cast Blessing is kind of sick. So if we look at the book, just to make sure I'm not messing up. Oh, Blessing is there. So, oh yeah, okay. Spells. There are six spells in the game. Blessing may be cast by wizards and clerics. All other spells may be cast only by wizards and elves. Casting a spell is an action equivalent to attacking in combat. Spells may be cast in melee. A spellcaster may attack in melee or cast a spell, but not both. Okay. Sick. So what do we take here? Let's see. A scroll. Let's see. Any character except bar Let's see. Scrolls may read one scroll at the cost of one action. I just want to read the scrolls thing. Characters who are not spellcasters cast spells from scroll as if they were level one, no matter what their actual level is. Spellcasters add their full level to the spell cast from the scroll. Scroll, even if the spell. Oh, so wait a minute. I gotta put that on on here. So scroll. That answers that. Scrolls cast at plus L. I'm gonna put that in for both. Scrolls cast at plus L. Okay, that's good to know. I'm glad we found that. All right. So let's go back now that I've zipped on down here to wizard. Okay. So um. So we, oh, we got to pick some spells. That, that was the whole reason why I was way down there. Okay, so um, I like the idea 
of 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 uh, let's see what do we have we have we have blessing fireball we have we have all the things I love me the idea of Lightning Bolt, right? Look at that. This spell works like an attack roll. The wizard adds his level to the roll against a group of minions. The spell will kill just one of uh, uh, one if it hits. Against a boss, it inflicts two life points. So let's take Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. So we're going to take at least one of those. I love Fireball. This spell works like an attack roll, although sleep is way good. So let's take let's take Fireball. Let's take one fireball. Maybe we take two lightning bolts and a fireball. Maybe we are just like Gennaro wizard to start, I think, right? Sleep is, is crazy. Sleep is straight up assassination. Uh, sleep is, is phenomenal. This, this spell works like an attack roll. It does not affect undead dragons and certain other monsters. The wizard adds his level to the roll. Sleep will defeat one boss. Oh, man. Maybe we take, instead of fireball, we take sleep. But then I want, maybe we take sleep one Lightning one and fire and uh, yeah, 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 let's do that. Sleep one once. Okay, so that's what we got. So the way that I'm doing this on the, on the little sheet I made here is I'm just putting them in. So when I cast them, I can cross it out or fill in the whole block or whatever. That's, that's what I'm doing for my spells. Now, I, I also have a hard time understanding what they're saying here with the spells. So like, let's say we do this one scenario and then we come like this one dungeon rather and then we come out Am I limited to these three? I don't think so. I think those six spells are always available. Those are just generic wizard spells, and so I can shift this list around, I believe, right? He may prepare multiple copies of or any combination of the six spells allowed in the game. Right, yeah. Prepare before starting the adventure. Not before your life, but before this particular adventure. So it sounds like we've got a spell book at home with these six spells in it, and we memorized these before we went into the dungeon, but we did not bring the spell. I mean, it's right there. The spell book is with us. But so I guess maybe this whole thing takes place in a single day and our spell book has all six spells. And in this single day, that's what we've memorized. And that we would, we, we, when we leave the dungeon, uh, that's when a new day would da dawn on us here. And then we would have to re-memorize spells for the new day, which would be an all new dungeon. Because once you leave the dungeon, you cannot go back into the dungeon. That said, we're not quite done yet. Then we go to, this is funny, I'll never, as bad as I want to, and as awesome as I think they are, I will never play a barbarian in this game because the amount of rules mistakes I would make simply based on the fact they can't use any kind of magic, I would always forget. Like, you can't even drink a healing potion, right? Okay, so what do we have here? Buying equipment. So let's take, where's my, there it is, my fancy literal dollar store calculator that has become uh, such a, a staple of my, my games here. 12 plus uh, 15 is going to give us 27 plus another 4 gold. The buttons don't even work very well. i got to go to a better calculator. I have 46 gold between the four characters, and we can trade the gold all around and do whatever we want. Now, one of the things that I've learned uh, that it says deep in the rules here somewhere, uh, a party must have at least one lantern. So we have to buy a lantern, period, end of story. So I'm going to fill in the little lantern blank spot here on my wizard because she only needs one hand to throw massive fireballs. So that's going to cost us minus four gold, leaves us 42 gold. Now, with that 42 gold, we are 100% going to spend 20 gold on four bandages, right? We are going to buy some bandages. So I think that's going to be one bandage per character just in case stuff hits the fan, right? So in, in, in my little brain here, <laughs> I, have also, I also have to pretend that... Starting equipment has no sell value. I, I've, I've just got to pretend that because because you could you could just sell it and gain what is it like half the gold? I'm sure it says on here somewhere selling equipment, uh, crushing or slashing. Does it say how to attack monsters? Selling equipment, right? Half of it's costing gold price rounded down. So I don't think that's that's good. Uh, I don't think it makes much sense. I, I just I don't know how to work this right because what happens if you have no gold? and no weapons, and you leave the dungeon. I mean, what do you do? Do you just sell your starting... What, 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 what is our starting armor? What is a light armor? 10 gold for 5 gold to buy a weapon? I guess that's what you do, and then you... you I guess that's what you do. You walk back into an all-new dungeon and fight one or two rooms to get some gold and then run away and hope you don't die, to then buy some armor to take it on again. That feels a lot video gamey to me. I'm not so sure about that one. 
Uh, so anyway, we definitely want some bandages because it'll allow us to heal one lost life and it can be done by anybody. Bandages may not be applied during combat. Each character can apply bandages once per adventure, healing one lost life. I just like having it. I like having not, you know more than just my cleric healing. Now, that leaves us 22 gold. We cannot buy heavy armor. That's okay. We have one lantern. Um, so we're kind of good to go. I really don't know what else I could buy. Mm, part of me thinks I should just buy four light hand weapons and, and, and like so that the, 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 like maybe the rogue has four daggers stuck in her belt so that uh, when the inevitable happens and the goblins steal all of our stuff, they just take those. I don't know what else to buy. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait a second here. Let me go back to the rogue. The rogue's starting equipment. Rogue, lock, picks, light armor. Weapons allowed. Light weapon and sling. So we have... And weapon armor allowed, light armor. We start with all. We don't start with a sling, so we gotta buy one, right? Where, where is, where is? I've lost the plot. Where are we at here? Sling is four gold, so that's minus four. So we're down to eighteen gold total now. So we're gonna give her a sling. Now there's also, there's also rules in the game for um, uh, arrows and bows and, and whatnot. So I imagine maybe it doesn't apply to a sling. Maybe we're just gonna pretend we're picking up little rocks and. Whoosh, you know, uh, find me that we found on the dungeon floor. I don't know. Um, is, is there anything for... Uh, because the rule said you can carry... Oh, okay. A weapon works like a bow, but at minus one. So sling minus one. Okay. Uh, bullets from a sling are treated as crushing weapons. So crushing... And it's minus one. That's what we're going to Minus one. Okay. So here's what we have to do. So I kind of I, I kind of blew over this. We have 18 gold. So what I'm going to do, I think, to start is just take everybody's gold away... And we're just going to give 18 gold to the dwarf because the dwarf convinced everybody I should hang on to the party's gold, right? I, uh, you know, uh, it's safest with me, the dwarf, right? Uh, so my dwarf convinced everybody that, you know, you need to hold on to the gold. So we've got our bandages. We have our, oh my God, how much is a blessing spell? 100 gold. No, we have 18 gold. So we could buy a bow. We could buy another lantern. I don't think we're going to buy anything else. I'm not sure what else to buy anyway. We can't. We can't buy anything that we're not already going to use unless we bought three more light hand weapons or we already start with some rope. The rest of the stuff isn't even on here, so I don't know. Uh, what we need to do now is fill in the, the combat values of these things. Now, a normal person knows this already because you've been playing this game. I am brand new to this, and you find the stats in the equipment list. So here they are. Hand weapon. This is a standard weapon like a sword, axe, or mace. Choose which uh, whether you want a crushing or slashing weapon. Apparently there's no piercing, okay? So... I took an axe here as slashing, and I took a crushing axe with my cleric over here. But they are plus zero to their attack rolls, essentially, right? Light armor, you can see that here, adds plus one to the wearer's defense rolls. So we know that three characters have plus one on their defense roll, right? These three people have plus one. So I'm going to write, and, and this is my character sheet, right? I have a little spot for armor. I'm just going to put a plus one in that spot, right? So plus one, just so that I can quickly do the math on all this when I have to, and hopefully do not forget. So uh, we can say plus one for all of that. Does, does the rogue, can the rogue have no shield? So the rogue can't use a shield. Okay. So the rogue wouldn't be a bad recipient for a second lantern if something happens either. Maybe we'll do that too, uh, right? Sling and dagger, you can only do them one-handed. Yeah, maybe. Why not? We'll take two lanterns. You never know what's going to happen. So now we have 14 gold. And I'm going to tell you right now, probably the worst things are going to happen. <laughs> okay? It's going to happen that way. A lantern is four gold. Light armor is plus one. So I put little plus ones everywhere I had that. And then we go on to shields. Give a plus one to the user's defense rolls. This does not apply when the character is fleeing or when he is surprised by wandering monsters. Okay, so we have two characters with shields. So again, I'm going to plus one in the little shield spot, which is right below armor down here. And then now that allows me to very quickly do the math here. So I'm going to put uh, minus one and minus one here for my... my, my um, my uh rogue right now it's not two separate minus ones i'm not gonna like have minus two 
on her on her attack. One's the sling and one is the dagger. They're both at minus one. So I'm just going to put minus one on her attack because either way, she's at minus one. Then for my cleric here, we are half a level. Well, she's level one round down. So she's not going to get a plus anything because a regular mace is a plus zero. So right now it's a plus zero. And then her defense is actually going to be we have a shield plus one and an armor plus one, so it's actually going to be plus two unless I'm um, hit by wandering monsters. Okay, now my dwarf has uh, the same deal, right? An armor and a shield, so the dwarf is going to be plus uh, two defense, but his attack is going to be plus one because uh, they always add their level to the attack. And then the rogue is defense is going to be plus one from the light armor plus level. So defense is a plus two. Hopefully I'm doing all this correct. And the, um, the light hand weapon for the mage here is going to be a minus one on her attack unless she's casting, right? So casting equals full plus L. And then defense, I think, is just uh, straight up zero. We don't have a plus one because we don't have any armor because you can't wear armor, right? So that information is going to be found in, in what you're looking at here, right? So now we have um, what we've got for the... Um, oh, look at... Wait a minute. Where is... How funny, I've never actually read this before. <laughs> uh, crushing light hand weapons. Club staff, cudgel. Let's see here. Blah, blah. blah. I don't see axe. Crushing, axe, crushing two-handed, crushing missile, sling, slashing, bladed weapons that inflict cutting and puncturing. Example, slashing light hand, dagger, knife, short sword. Oh, no, axe is there. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I just want to make sure I, I had axe on the list because that's how I picture my character. My, 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 my dwarf I use for every game. He's got an axe and a shield, and he's just this, this. He's older than the rest of the party. He's, he's got a little gray uh, in, in that beard there. So, all right, so that's... Uh, that's, but but not stark white like my, my mage, like her hair, but she's been around for a long time. So, okay, I think that pretty much does it, unless I'm missing something incredibly obvious here. Uh, rope is four gold. I do like the idea of spreading out all the things a little bit. We still have 14 gold, so do we think that maybe buying rope on the cleric, because we don't if, 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 if we use one for something, we won't have any. I don't know how it works. I've never had to use it for anything, but maybe... 14 gold. What else can we buy? What is a... I don't know. Uh, holy Water Bottle's 30. Let's just hang on to our 14 gold. We've got to feed the goblins somehow, right? So I think that's the party we're going to go with. I think that uh, if everybody's in agreement here, everybody, everybody, <laughs> I think that that's correct. And I think that we're good to go. Um, I'm going to take a minute here to go ahead and maybe clean up some of the writing on here. And, you know, uh, and just so that I have things written a little clearer or clearer for myself. And then we'll jump into the very first room here in Four Against Darkness. All right, it's time to get started finally. So these are the Dungeons & Dragons campaign case terrain set. And it just so happens that the, the tiles work out almost exactly to what you want. If you whack off the last two sides, we have 28 by 20, which is what you want. So I think that that's, that's going to work for us. What I'm going to do is get rid of this book since we have the PDF handy. And then I have my, my physical copy of this that I'm going to use to, so to rotate around as I'm drawing rooms and whatnot. So the way this starts, my understanding is the one and only time you use the chart on the left is right now. We have a five, so we're gonna draw that entrance room. <clears throat> Let me see what this is gonna look like here first. So it's gonna start out with, oh, that's bizarre here. So my first room, I'll pull up the camera in just a second here. So I don't have like a center. Uh, so maybe I'll just do that for the starting part. I'll pull this up in just a second. I, I do like how large this, this is going to work out for us so that we can see um, everything. And you guys won't have any trouble seeing it once I... There we go. Now, I just wanted to get that started so I knew where it went. Okay, so here we go. We'll put two up here. And looks like this goes over now. My understanding, and you'll, you'll probably hear me say that an awful lot because I don't feel like I understand this game very well. I am working on it, and I'm sure that there's going to be a dozen or more comments in here that tell me how I have horribly messed up their favorite game and misrepresented it in some way and then turned people off of it, and I apologize. That's not my intent. I'm just bad at it. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Now, I also believe that this starting room, I don't think anything happens in here. I think it's just that, like, we walked in, and I don't think we roll in the chart. I, I, 
I kept finding stuff that wouldn't that didn't explicitly say that, but it would say things like except for in the first room, right? So I, I think we just skip it. I think that this is just room one. This is no creatures and bad stuff happen here unless it's a wandering creature uh, on your way out the door. And I, I believe you just cruise on. So so this is it. This is how we're starting. So the way that this works, again, is my understanding. We roll here now. So we have two. Oh, you know what? How funny. And I grabbed the wrong dice. So the way that I'm going to do this is the red dice leads. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> okay, so we have a 16 is what we've rolled, right? So what does 16 look like on our chart here? Our 16... Oh, and I never called for which direction we go out. Well, um, I was going to go to the right, uh, but uh, I don't have any proof of that. So we'll say we'll say 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5... Oh, even better. <laughs> we'll say 1, 2, 3, all right? So just, just because I messed that up, we'll leave that one to fate. So we're going left. That's a D3. Uh, okay, so we're going left. We rolled a 16, so we're going to put um, a room, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then it comes up and up, and it's by two, right? Just like this, and there's a door here. Now, doors aren't going to cause us any complications in this. Doors are not going to be locked in this little starting dungeon here. That's what I'm going to say is that I just don't want to deal with any additional rules because I've already got... I'm already not sure I have the basic rules down. I don't need to start tacking on optional rules. So I, I urge you to watch and tell me where I've made mistakes. So now we've got our room drawn. We have to roll what kind of room it is. So uh, if it's a corridor, which this is not... It would be on the left. On the right, it's a room, which it is. A corridor would only have a one by in it, right? But this this makes it a room. So we know that we've got a room. So we're going to add these two dice together. And we have ourselves a seven, it looks like. Okay, so what's a seven in this situation? A seven on the room side is roll d6 on the minion table. So what I'm going to do, just because I found it to be very helpful, helpful for me, is just put a little seven in there. And like this is the entrance, right? So so I'm going to put a little seven right here so that I know that I, I don't care about the shape. What I care about is what's what's here, right? So we know that this is a seven, so we can go back and say, oh yeah, what'd we do? Roll d6 on the minion table. How exciting! We get a fight right away. Uh, and then if win, roll d6 on the treasure table. Okay, cool. So, monsters! Now, I had to piece this together, so I apologize if it looks like an absolute nightmare, but like little things are just not mentioned here and there, um, and they're just like a random paragraph you'll find, you know, on, on, on page 57, it'll just throw away a paragraph about like, oh yeah, these dudes will fight these dudes, um, you know, and then, and then a random thing somewhere else. Oh, there's no loot if it's a wandering monster, but then in the wandering monster section, it doesn't talk about that, and then, so I, I, have, I have, without rewriting the rule book myself, I've tried to, to set some of this stuff up to help me remember what's going on here. So we're rolling a d6 on the, what did I say? See, this is why I did it. Minions table, right? It was number seven, right? This is why I'm doing that. Seven. Minions table. We go to monsters. We look at the minions table, which is right below my colorful edits there. And the reason why I put the colors in there, undead hate clerics, trolls, goblins, and this is hilarious. Kobolds hate dwarves. Look at all the monsters in this game. I don't see the word kobold anywhere on here, do you? But it's specifically mentioned in the book. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. But uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and roll uh, on the minions table. So see, it's a d6. That's it. That's all the monsters in the game, right? Is Are, are these four charts and it's a d6? So we have one. So we have a uh, skeletons or zombies. So we're going to roll... One, two, and three are skeletons. Four, five, and six. Wow, I just chucked that right out of the thing. Uh, can you see any one of these better than the other? Let's try this one. So that's going to be the second set. So it's a D6 of zombies. So zombies, we have six zombies. Fantastic. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, now the way I'm going to have to work the combat is I have printed out from some awesome person on Board Game Geek has made this sheet that works really, really, really well. So I'm going to steal it for my purposes here, and we're going to fight some... Oh, you know what? Maybe. Let's see here. So here's the monsters, and you can see the monster stats are all on there. I have it out oh, here on a different chart here, so I can write this down here. So basically, is it a minion? Yes. And what I'm going to do is put a little one... I'll show you the sheet I'm using here in a minute, but we're going to copy down the information. Now, it looks like all this stuff is the same. Level 3 undead, so they're level 3. 
count. How many? We rolled a six, right? Yes. So we're fighting six. So one, two, three. I'll explain all this in a minute, but I got to get it right so I can show you exactly how it works. So they are undead. Undead. And let's see here. Um, no treasure. Fantastic. No treasure. No treasure. Crushing and uh, let's see here. Crushing weapons attack skeletons at plus one. These are zombies, so that's not. Oh, I did roll zombies, right? Four. Yeah, so that doesn't apply. So zombies. Zombies. Minions. Uh, arrows are at negative one. So we don't have arrows. Skeletons and zombies never test morale. Oh, that's funny. Well, then never mind. I'm going to change what I just did. Okay, so I'm going to erase what I just did here. Okay, so there we go. Never test morale. Um, and the reactions are always fight to the death. Okay, so what that means is if their reactions were not always fight to the death, my option would have been pass the first round of what might be combat, right? So basically, I'm going to go in guns blazing on these guys this time, meaning I win initiative. If I wanted to hang back and watch what they do or be like, yo, zombies, um, that's that's what that's talking about when it says uh, reactions. Now, we know that they always fight to the death, so there's no you're not, you're not trying to reason with a zombie, right? Uh, but some of these will say they'll take a bribe or they'll put me on a quest or what have you, okay? These are zombies. I'm attacking first. Now, the other thing that happened, I'm going to show this as best I can here. Oh, that's as far as it'll go. Okay. So I, I put a one in the minion box and up at the top left, and that's because once we once we defeat or they flee, that counts as a defeat as well for the enemy, our 10th minion, somebody gets to attempt to level up. So that's where that little one is going to go. I wrote the name zombies in there. It's not a boss creature, and it's not vermin either. Vermin don't count for my experience. Then they're level three. It told us that. That's the die we're rolling against, the number on the die we're rolling against. I'm sorry. How many did I roll for? Six. Any notes? Yeah, they're undead and they have no treasure. And I didn't do um, flee, ambush, or bribe yet, right? They, did, they didn't ambush me. I guess that's what that is. I'm not actually sure. Uh, so then I filled in six little pips. Now, initially, and you might be able to figure this out, the first two pips on the bottom I had filled in initially. Because what I had done was I had put, put four pips across the top row. And this is just me. I'm not sure if this is intended how this is used. This is a reminder for me. Maybe you want to adopt this as well. There were six. So creatures, uh, things that you fight, do a morale check when their, their, their dudes are halved, right? So, or less than half, I guess, right? So I had four pips on the top and two on the bottom, meaning when I had killed my fourth one, I would have to, to stop right then and there and make a morale check for them because they might flee and I win the combat anyway and they leave behind any treasure. Now, A, they have no treasure. B, they're undead. Uh, and they don't test morale. So I just put them all in the top line so that I remember not to make a morale check. So hopefully that makes some sense. Boy, that's hard to hold that up in front of that camera. Ow, my shoulder. Okay, too old for this. Okay, so we're ready to fight some zombies now. Hopefully that all made, <laughs> made sense. Let's, um, let's see what's going to happen. Now, I say that we attack first, and there are six of them here. So I have different colored dice. Now, you really don't need all this. You only really need two to play this whole game. I have Dwarf, Cleric, Rogue, mage. And in fact, that's funny because they look different for you. So there's there's the layout that you're going to see it as right there, right? So that's that's how my dice, this is a purple one. It's just easy for my brain to associate the purple with magic. It's easy for me to remember the white one is the cleric, the darker shadowy one for the rogue, and the red one as, as like our warrior or our party leader or what have you, right? The, 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 the armor and, you know, the, the meat and potatoes guy, right? So that's just how I'm going to do it. Okay. So normally... Uh, let's do it one at a time. So, so we get to pick who attacks first. We're in a room. If we were in a corridor, this combat would be way different. We're in a room, so we can we can we bust into the room. What's up, guys? We can all attack right away. So the first person to attack, I think, is going to be our our dwarf, right? Our dwarf is going to go in, guns blazing, and rolled a three. So if we look over here, we see the dwarf has plus one attack. So the dwarf rolled a four, right? The plus one attack comes from uh, their level. So the dwarf rolled a four. They are a level three. That's like three hit dice essentially, right? So did we do three or more? Yes, we killed one. Ha diggity. There we go. We're just going to fill in that circle. So now the cleric is going to do the same thing and she has a plus zero. So she has to roll a three or better. She missed. Okay. The rogue is at a minus one. So the rogue is going to have to roll a four. 
<clears throat> we got a four. So the rogue managed to stab one. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna circle in one more zombie. And now the mage could totally drop a fireball in here, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't think that's quite worth it. We're just gonna go ahead and just try to bonk one on the head. We're at minus one. Can you see that? Oh yeah, it's over here. Uh, so we're we're at four minus one because it's a light hand weapon. It's a staff, and she's just wham. Okay, so we killed three of them now. Uh, if this was a normal enemy, I think I'd have to... Ooh, now I feel like I have to double check. They would do their morale check. Is it half or... Oh, I don't know where it is offhand. Dang, I'll have to find that out. Um, in any case, this is what this looks right now. So can I get this on there? There we go. So zombie. So I, I filled in the three. You can see that we've killed three of the uh the monsters and i've just i've just filled them in right i've just i've just filled in the little pips that's how i know they're dead now certain things are going to come back to life like trolls and we can just fill in a whole new pip um that's you know that's how that works so by the way I, I, it's right here when a group of minions that's that's vermin and uh minions uh, loses more than half its initial number. So they don't they wouldn't make a morale check until one more died. So I did have it right when I filled in the four. It is more than half. Okay. Now this game also features exploding dice. I was hoping to roll a six there and a one is always a fail. So unfortunately that I didn't get to show you the uh, the exploding six. So now you know these these zombies are angry at me. They're going to attack me. Now what's 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 a neat part of this is the we're not roll they're not rolling. The zombies don't roll. The zombies don't roll. We roll for our defense, right? So remember, our defense on our dwarf here is, a is at a plus two. And we're trying to get over, not equal, to their uh, uh, level. Meaning we need a four, not a three, to defend. And I may as well roll these all at the same time, right? Everybody's gonna get attacked once because there's, oh no, no, I'm sorry. The mage doesn't need to roll. There's only three of them, so only three attacks are going to go, and I'm always going to go in the same order. It's always going to be uh, dwarf, cleric, rogue to try to spare the mage. So, so this this purple one doesn't count. So now, how'd this work out? So we have here. If I if I arrange them in the way that my sheet is arranged, oh, I wonder. Oh, how funny! I kind of want to do this just to do it. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. So, all right. So our our dwarf has a plus two on their defense because they are um, amazing, because they have plus one on their armor and plus one on their shield. So that's plus two to the red two. So the two gives us four, which is higher than three. So we defended because three is their level, right? You can see that up here. Then the uh, cleric also has a plus two because again, she's awesome. She has a shield and armor as well. So her two plus two is four, so we're good there. And the rogue rolled a six, which is not like a guaranteed automatic success, but like on a defense, it pretty much is because it's six plus two. So she has an eight, which uh, she only needed to roll higher than a uh, three. So we, we did okay, right? So now it's the next round of combat. and. I don't see why I wouldn't just roll everybody to attack because not everybody's gonna kill. So everybody's just gonna keep, you know, attacking. So let's see, and we're gonna resolve them in the same order. I'm going to assume that my combat kind of stays the same. I will stop and, and make adjustments to, to, to things as it goes. So these two are just flat misses. I don't get to add anything, right? They missed. So what do we have here? We have the rogue and the mage here in the combat. So the rogue is gonna go ahead and hit for four, uh, so the, the minions are outnumbered this time because there's only three of them, right? Oops, I slipped this down. So one of the rogue abilities was, there we go. See, there's only three and they're minions, right? So there's only three, I have three pips undone. So the minions here say uh, negative one, except for plus my level, plus the rogue's level when minions are outnumbered. Well, there's four of us and three of them. So guess what? The rogue is at a flat zero, so the rogue rolled a four, so we killed one more. Okay, that extra little bit of damage, the extra one doesn't go anywhere. And then uh, here, we're at five minus one is four, we, we killed another. So now, we are down to one zombie left. And remember, zombies fight to the death, that's why we're not doing a morale check. So, one attack is gonna come in, let's say that the zombie attacks the dwarf. Oh no, the cleric. It has to attack the cleric, I forgot. Hold on. Uh, dang it, I didn't, right there. See, in pink. Right, so uh, what's gonna happen is, is, is because the undead hate the cleric, they're going to attack the cleric with that extra kill, right? So the cleric had to be attacked at first, 
and then we had to spread the damage around, right? Now, since there's not enough attacks to go around, how do you decide who they attack? It's, it's, it's hated enemy first, and then it's different if you're fleeing, something like its lowest hit points or something. Um, but, but in this case, they have to attack the cleric. The last one is going after the cleric, so we're going to roll. So we failed. So the cleric got hit, okay? So the cleric goes from five to four hit points. That's simple combat. And it's done. They also had no loot. Okay? So uh, we don't get to roll on this. The treasure table. The one through six in the very top. I've just tacked... Oh, I didn't fix this from the traps. I forgot. Uh, I changed it. I actually added stuff on this one chart so it doesn't quite fit on the screen like it's supposed to. That's that's my bad. I, uh, <laughs> I was trying to cram all these like random rules and things into a usable... Uh, page. So I apologize that was not ready to go, but there it is nice and fixed now. Okay. Boy, putting that mouse up here is, has been the greatest thing ever. Okay, so there we go. That was it. That was combat. We get nothing else. I mean, basically, we got a 1 out of 10 before somebody can roll for experience. That's the room. There was no loot. Even though this says, that says, what was it, a 7? If when roll d6 on the treasure table, they specifically have no loot. Right, so so we don't get to roll that. So now we're here, and if we need a visual representation of where I am, our Lord and Savior Cthulhu is, is you know always with us, right? <laughs> so here we go. Now, and we go right back to the top. So we're gonna roll two D, or uh, we're gonna roll D sixty six here, and we've got ourselves a forty five. <clears throat> Ooh, little corridor. So let me let me count this out here real fast. Let me see where's my little corridor counter here. 45. We have, so it's three, four, five, six long, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. It'll take us almost to the edge, right? All the way down here. So it kind of doesn't matter how I draw it. So I think I'm going to draw it just this way. So the shorter part is right here. Now these doors are important because they allow us to flee monsters and close the door behind us, which I'm not so sure how much of that we're going to be doing, but it's a possibility. So let's see here. And then we're going to go two down. Now we also need to make sure that we're somehow marking that these rooms are different. So I'm just using little dots so that I know that that's a separate room than whatever I put up here or down here. In this case, we had to oops, arrange it so there was a door there. So I just, you know, there's, there's, um, this, this one had a door before in our, whatever we just rolled, 45, there was no door, right? It didn't matter. Just as long as they're connected somehow. You can't connect it to like the middle of a hall, like a room though. You know, like if I rolled a 56, I would have to connect to one of those three doors from the hallway we're coming out. I can't just put it in the middle of whatever, right? It's so like you kind of have to stay with the entrances and exits of that. So there's there's that. So now we're actually technically in here, and we get to roll here to find out what kind of room it is. We have the shape down. It is a 10. <laughs> okay, so, so it's a 10. So let me put a little 10 in here. Alrighty, so this is a... I'll put it by the, the entrance, I guess. I don't know. There's a, It's a 10. Okie dokie. So roll d6 on the weird monsters table. So let's go back to this and we're going to roll on the table that is that is right. How do I do that? Oh, things are backwards for me now, right? Right there. This table in the bottom right. <clears throat> so this could get wild. A one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I fully expected a six. Okay. So we found a minotaur. Oh, what did we find already? We fought zombies in here. How many? I like writing it down. So we fought six zombies. And now we're already fighting something kind of burly, yeah? Man, so one minotaur. All right, so in a... Oh, no, wait a second. Ooh, maybe I messed up already. It's empty. Ooh, no, I messed up. It's empty. We rolled a 10. It's a corridor. I'm sorry. So if you take a look at the left side, that's for a corridor. This was was just one by ones. That's a corridor, not... A, oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I almost made a huge mistake right off the bat. So a 10 is empty, meaning we can search. Okay. So how do we search? Search empty room. Oh, here's a whole table for it. So you can see empty room search table D6. So we're going to roll a D6. Wow, I can't believe I almost made that horrible mistake. When searching in corridors, roll at minus one. So it's whatever this is, minus one. We rolled a two minus one is a one. 
Great. It's not empty. There's wandering monsters in there. What kind of wandering monsters? I'm going to laugh so hard if I roll a five. Okay. <laughs> so we found vermin, okay? So there's like rats running around this level, this this particular floor, okay? Uh, so, oh, and one other thing is, and I, 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 this is something I like mentally did when I, when I, Tested this a couple. I've played three times to just kind of try to solidify some of these rules here before this test. So this is officially game four for me. Um, is that when you go to a corridor, you have you have to um, you can only fit two characters side by side, and then there's two, so front and back, right? If you've ever played like any of those old school dungeon crawl games, you know, like Dungeon Hack or any of that kind of stuff, or like more modern, there's a Legend of Grimrock is a great example, right? You have two characters in the front, two characters in the back. This emulates that, right? Now, unfortunately, this is a wandering monster. So let's go back. Where's my wandering monsters? Wandering monsters sneak on the party and automatically attack first on the first turn of combat. Characters may not use their shield bonus on their first defense roll against wandering monsters. Um, and if you're in a corridor, the wandering monsters will attack the two rearmost characters and they have no loot. So we're screwed, right? So we, <laughs> we, uh, we came into this room and we didn't like, you know, change our formation or anything. We have our, our rogue here, um, uh, you know, with a dagger in hand and our um, uh, mage here with a staff, and they were in the back of the group. And so we all of a sudden just got jumped from behind by some vermin, by some giant centipedes. Oh my goodness, a d6 giant centipedes. Okay, so I'm also going to put a little like S in here to say that we searched it. And. Uh, there we go. We put a little dollar sign. I don't know. That's not a good thing. Maybe an X over the S. Okay. What did I roll here? So uh, what did I say? Giant centipedes, and there's three of them. So three giant Oop, I ran out of room. There we go. Okay, so we have three giant centipedes in the room, right? And now, if you're an artist, that's amazing, and I wish I could draw that well, but I can't. So I'm just going to write what it is because I have the room for it. So now we have, in here it says minion. Now these guys are minions, but they don't count, right? So right here is where we're going to put minion, but it's a vermin. So it's not going to count against anything. So I'm just going to circle the vermin. And I'm going to grab the deets for them right here. So we have, <clears throat> I lost it. Where'd they go? Giant centipedes, level three. Again, no treasure, no treasure. That's a bummer. Um, a wounded character by a giant centipede save versus level two poison. So level two poison on hit. Can't fit all that, but I'll put level two poison. Uh, and then, and then um, they always attack. So they, they straight up get a first free attack. Now the biggest problem here is that we can't get our other two guys into combat. So it's literally up to the, uh, the mage and the rogue here to try to do this. And so I'm going to separate their little pips because there's only three of them. I'm going to separate their little pips two and one, right? So like that. So that if I kill two of them, they might run away anyway because they're big, big wussies, right? So they are wandering monsters. They attack first. So they're, they're, they won initiative essentially because they jumped our party from behind. What a bunch of jerks. What do we got here? We've got uh, a rogue and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a mage. Now they can't get three attacks. They can get two. So I'm only going to roll for two defense because they're in the same position I'm in. They're giant, remember, right? Well, so, oh, this was supposed to be the rogue. I grabbed the wrong die, but it's the gray one. So the gray one rolled a one. So the rogue is going to get hit. Um, and the mage is defense five, so that's above the three. So the mage doesn't get hit. So the rogue gets hit, but the rogue has to save against poison. Uh, what I say? Level two poison? Come on, rogue. We got to, we got to, woof. So um, I believe that that's all good for the poison roll. So we're going to take one damage onto the rogue. She's going to go from four down to three hit points. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we already have very few hit points. Now, the downside of, of the, the way that we're, we're in this little uh, area is that that's all we can do is roll for two attacks, right? These guys don't have ranged attacks, and I can't reorder the party. We're just stuck. So we're both just going to attack and see what happens. Okay, so and we need a what, a three? So the rogue is gonna miss, and the mage is gonna take one of them out. That's it. 
All right, so there we go. We got we got one of them got bonked. Now what happens is is they're gonna roll two again because the one that died, his buddy climbed over the dead body or whatever, and is going to attack the same two characters of mine. Okay, so the rogue is at a defense of four this time because she has light armor and gets to add her level to it. So her two is a four, which is higher than their three, right? Yeah. It has to be higher. Right? That's hard to remember for some reason because you want to associate it with did I hit. Um, as far as saving throws go, I'm pretty sure like save versus poison is just to roll the thing. But defense, I believe, is... Um, boy, that's something I might have to look up. I'm not sure. I've never had the save versus poison before. Save. Let's see if we can we can read it together. Uh, rules instructed to save specific name, blah, blah, any modifiers. Is the target number or better? Nothing happens. Okay, right. So that's the same. But defense must be higher than the level. So I needed a four to defend, right? So we have a two and then we're at plus two because we have the light armor and our level plus level gives us four defense. So nobody got hit and the mage is just like, whatever. All right, so we're gonna attack again and it's it's only two of them in the hall. So let's, let's roll one first and see if the mage, I mean the, the rogue can kill. So I wanna walk through the process here. Okay, so the rogue gets a three hit, which is fine for hitting, but not for defense. <laughs> so uh, a four minus one because she's using that. Oh no, we outnumber them now. So we're actually at a zero, right? We outnumber them. They are technically minions. So vermin, vermin and minions are minions. Bosses and weird are bosses. So this is a minion. So minion will suffer the morale check. So we're gonna kill one. And now it didn't say they don't run away, right? I didn't see anything about them not running. Mm, yeah, I don't see anything about them not running. I don't see why they wouldn't flee. Even though they jumped us, they got their butts kicked. Okay, so now on a one, two, or three, they run away. On a four, five, and six, they stay. So they stay. Okay, so now the mage gets their attack still, right? So they, the combat could have ended right there, but it's not. That one is, is going to attack, uh, but our mage is going to try to have something to say about that and miss horribly. So they're going to attack again, and we're going to say that they're going to attack the rogue. Uh, so the rogue, three, four, five, defended, and then they're both going to attempt to kill this last one. You only make, oh, and we killed it. So you only make a morale check once for the creature. Uh, so they had no loot, they had no nothing for us, that was just a huge waste of time, but the good news is um, that room was empty and we got nothing great out of it. Whoopee, okay. <laughs> so carrying on, let's go ahead and explore this direction this time here. Let's see what we can find. Um, let's see. Yeah, wow, what a dungeon already. Fighting zombies and centipedes, finding a whole bunch of nothing. We've got ourselves a 24, perhaps? Yes, a 24. So 24. Okay. Ooh, that one's got some, 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 some options, huh? I think I'm going to do it the other way around so that we kind of wind back around into the and we got to put a door here now and what wasn't a door before it was just you know what it was too far down the hallway and we couldn't see that there was actually a door right there and so yeah we thought it was an open area but nope there was a there was a door there so we're going to go ahead and draw in the door and then we're going to have uh, one door on this end as well okay there's this and then another door Ooh, so this comes over one more Aha, yeah, see, I like this because there's doors everywhere. Now, like I said, I'm not playing with the locked door thing. I just don't know how. I just, I'm trying to figure out the base game, and I can't wait to see the comment section about how bad I screwed this game up to find out if I'm even doing it right. Okay, so we're in here. What kind of room is this? <laughs> this is a six and a six, and it's a room, not a corridor, so we're on the right, and it is a vermin. Okay, so we're going to go six. And the vermin, again, I hate them. I mean, they're just they're just nuisances, right? Because they're worthless. They are a six vermin. So we got two D6 skeletal rats. Oh, man. Okay, so more vermin here. Vermin. Skeletal rat. Now, the good news is that sounds like undead. Level three undead. Level three undead. That's great because it actually means the cleric gets plus one because she has a crushing weapon, yeah? Um, let's see here. Um, ooh, yeah, and our sling and all that good stuff might as well. Okay, so level three undead. No treasure! Oh, do they all say no treasure if they're vermin? I don't think they would, right? Vampire frogs are treasure minus one, I guess. 
Goblin Swarmlings are treasure minus one. It's just what I'm rolling. <laughs> it has no treasure. Okay, no treasure. There should, I, I want to redo this so I have little boxes to tick on like these common things. Okay, so then, um, let's see. Skeletal Rats, no treasure. Crushing Weapons, uh, attack. Oh, and the Mage gets plus one. But they cannot be attacked by bows and slings. That's okay. Reactions. So, if we, if we try a reaction roll meaning we give up our initiative. They could just run away and save us the time. Um, the downside is, is if we if we fail that, we're going to get attacked first by seven skeletal rats. That's a lot of damage to take if they get the first attack. I almost feel like we could wipe out quite a few of them because they're they're only a level 3, right? So let's let's just go ahead and we're just going to we're just going to charge in there. We're going to have to do a lot of modifying of the damage here, so bear with me. Okay, everybody's just going guns blazing, right? Okay, so the good news is we know that all of these are going to hit, right? So we know <laughs> we know that this, this is a crushing blow of a six, so that'll kill two, okay? Because we, we, we went over their level three by another number. So, so right away, the, 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 the cleric hit for six, so that's two down, right? I'm just going to do them in whatever order. Um, okay, so that's two skeletal rats down. The, 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 the mage is going to get the, the minus one because it's the light weapon, but a plus one because it's a crushing. So they got a four, so they killed one. The rogue is going to go two minus one. So the rogue didn't kill anybody. However, we've got a six out here for the dwarf who just took that giant axe and just whirlwinded now remember that explodes so we've already got two dead ones right we got six plus oh no six plus one six seven oh god so 12 13 <laughs> oh god <laughs> so so now we're at 19 damage oh my god <laughs> 25 damage. I mean, we killed them all a long time ago. This is just funny. Okay, and then a one. All right, now it, it's not it's not mini rogue rules. That doesn't rule it out. It's just plus one. So we had what? 24 plus two. So we, we did 26 divided by three is um, all the damage. So they all got... <laughs> I am so glad that worked out. Only, only so I can show you, right? So I could, I could explain how it works, right? Like, I like that more than just like, oh, hey, that worked out. No, like that's what you want to see what happens because then you know the rule now, right? So that's how that worked out. We, we <laughs> Apparently the dwarf doesn't like rats. Okay, so there it goes. <laughs> oh my god, I'm glad we attacked them first. How funny. Uh, okay, so that was what now? That was, uh, oh, I forgot to write down seven. So seven skeletal rats. And then we're going to put, what was it, 26 damage, baby. Yeah, look at that, 26 damage. Okay, <laughs> so not that I'll remember that in the future. Now, we're going to go ahead. Should we go up or to the right? I say we go up. Let's go up here this way. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. We have uh, 51. What does a 51 look like here? So this is the little split one right there. All right, so we can go two different ways on this. That's nice. Okay, so it's going to be a door at the bottom, one room up here, over, over, and up to, oh yeah, putting these little dots on this thing was the best thing I ever did. Um, okay, so there's this, 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 and that. Now this is a dry, I'm using a dry erase marker this time, unlike wet erase like I was with D100 Dungeon. Um, cause this, it, it, I don't know. It just, they, the, the ink really flows off them really well for whatever reason. So I, I, you know, that's great and all, but that, the, the Chessex mat I was using for D100 Dungeon, I love, um, but it's wet erase only. So I'm, I'm trying to not smear this is, is what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so let's go. Now the problem here is I should have gone to like these other rooms here, right? And done things to just like end off the dungeon, I think, because at some point, if we don't do whatever we're supposed to do in here, I have to like wander back out this nightmare scenario. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, we have a four plus six is a 10 in a corridor, which we know to be empty, right? So this is a corridor, this is an empty corridor. Okay, so I need I need to put a little uh, a 10 
and it's a, it's a, we're going to search right now, right? So I'm going to search in here. I mean, we don't have to search, but like, you know, I just want to see how the game works. So let's do it. So we're searching in a corridor, minus one. We got a four. So the room is empty. Okay, so empty, empty, empty. All right, well, we're back to the top then. Let's let's just go up here then maybe and see what happens. Let's, let's go to the left. What kind of room are we going to find? We're going to find a 44. So what does a 44 look like here? So we've got, we've got a 44 is going to be, oh wow, that's a huge room. Okay. Do I draw it as is or do I rotate it? I think, I think we draw it as is. Okay. So let's go ahead and that's two up. And so this is good because we're going to learn now exactly what happens when we run out of space i think right oh no it's just barely gonna fit yeah so this is this is happens to be the edge as well so it's just gonna barely fit on here too and this is gonna go all the way up to three right there technically and then there's a door right there so we're gonna enter this room here and what kind of room is it we're gonna find out the horrors beyond and it's a room not a corridor so a room that's the hardest thing for me to remember. We have an eight in a room is a roll on the minions table. So we stumbled across the layer of, let's see here, an eight. We'll put a little eight right here. That doesn't look like much of an eight, but there it is. So we stumbled across the layer of three. We found ourselves some hobgoblins. What a bunch of jerks, yeah? Okay, so hobgoblins, H-O-B, G-O-B. Hobgoblins, what level are these guys? Level four, oh no. How many? D6, let's see, we got a D6 Hobgoblins in the house, huh? This will be, let's see here. You know what I didn't do is I never wrote Giant Centipede. There we go, I couldn't remember what we killed. <laughs> okay, so Hobgoblins. Um, these are minions, so they're gonna be our level two, or our second minion toward our 10. Uh, and I rolled a three, it looks like. So there's gonna be three level four Hobgoblins in this room, that's horrible. What else do we have here? So we could, we could, we could possibly bribe them, but I don't have 10 gold per Hobgoblin. Do I have 30 gold? No, I don't, so we can't even bribe them. I'm just gonna kill them, right? Because look, treasure plus one. <gasps> Yes, okay. Treasure plus one. That's what I want to see. That's it. I mean, you guys are just straight up enemies to kill. Okay, and we're in a room, thankfully, meaning that we can just, you know, uh, have everybody fight and go just all out on that. So let's go three hob gob lens there we go okay three hobgoblins and if you think that i'm building this dungeon from left to right on accident you're mistaken it's so that i don't wipe the dry erase <laughs> so, okay uh all right so we have um yeah this is our level two this is our, our second minions right so i put a little two here to show that that's two towards the 10 experience that we need if we can kill or they flee so we're not going to mess around we're just going to go straight into this fight and try to take out these hobgoblins okay Boom, and we're gonna roll in like the you know uh, party order for the attacks. I believe is always is gonna work for me. So we're gonna go this, this. Ooh, look at that—a six from the mage. Okay, and they have what a four hit points. Okay, so our our warrior or our dwarf rather does plus one, and goblins aren't hobgoblins. He has a plus one against goblins for attack, not hobgoblins. So. We only got a four, which still kills one. So I have one dead hobgoblin of the three. Then we're gonna go over to the cleric who has a plus zero and rolled a three, not going to hit. Then we go to the rogue who rolled a four, which is going to hit and kill. And then they're going to make a morale check, but it's kind of funny because the mage killed at least one of them. Uh, just for fun, I want to re-roll that six because it, it's you know it's exploding. So the mage got a seven, so would only kill the last one anyway um, if they don't run away. So one to three, they run away. Good, they didn't flee. We killed them. We killed all the bastards. All right, so that means we're gonna get to roll the treasure chart finally. I'm so excited. Let's go ahead to so the treasure table. Is the one on the top. The rest of this stuff is just stuff I didn't know where to put, so it wound up on the treasure table button. So I had it at hand. So let's see what we get. 
And there, oh, we got a six. That's a bummer. This is this creature is a plus one, so we got a six or more. One random magic item from the magic treasure table below. And you'll notice it's not below. I have a whole separate chart. Oh, oh, I could have slipped the the treasure table. Now that I'm looking at this, down right here, right like right here, treasure table would have fit, and I would have that would have made more sense. That's a bummer. Okay. Well, we found something, so I can't complain. That's cool. We found a, oh my god, a six. I don't know if that's good or bad. Let's see here. Um, a fireball staff. Allows to cast fireball spell twice, then its powers are depleted. Only wizards may use it. Well, you know what? Add the user's level to the spell roll. So I'm going to write fireball staff and put two little two little ticks in there. And wizards only add the, so plus L. I'm just gonna put a little plus L. So hopefully, if I ever use it, I remember. So now we got some spells. Now we're ready to rock. All right, let's carry on here. Right, we may as well come out this way and see what we find. Let's see here. This is gonna be weird if it like ends the dungeon. Okay, so we have a 63, which is just a long corridor right along the back of the dungeon. This is like the employee entrance area. <laughs> so let's see here 63 is that that's yeah that's just okay so the way that we have to draw this these these let's see one two three four five it's a corridor um so and then in the middle is a door on either side now in in this case there is no door on the back side to like the out because there's no more we that this is as big as our map is allowed to be so it really we're looking at you know that right we have a we have an enclosed corridor that we can go down to this end or we can come through this door um now the question is do we search this let's 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 find out oh well we don't know yet we have to find out if we get attacked so before we go in here i don't think i don't think you're allowed to like you don't roll for the room before you just have to go in and hope you don't get attacked all right, so let's see what we got. We have a, an 11. An 11 on this room is, oh dear. What is that? No, this is corridor, I'm sorry. Roll d6 on the boss table. Hold up, I don't know what happens here now. <laughs> okay, so we have an 11 on a corridor. Maybe that's a bummer. Roll d6 on boss table. Okay, so now we have to go to more monsters. And roll d6. We found we found a big fat guy. We got a four on the boss. Oh no, this is gonna be a Medusa, isn't it? Yep. <sighs> okay, so we're gonna die right here. Okay, we found a Medusa. Uh oh. Okay, so now the thing about Medusa is that she's a party ender. Because she's gonna turn everybody to stones. So let me let me write boss Medusa. No, let's see here. Medusa, we found, let's see, Medusa level what? Five? Four? Medusa four with four life points though, right? So she has one, two, three, and four. Now I can't remember offhand. I think, oh, I might have to check this out. When a boss gets to, I think, half their hit points, it's it's almost like a morale check for bosses, I think, right? Where they actually lose a level during the fight. Basically, they get easier when you're attacking them, right? When an attack goes, let's see here. Um, when a boss loses more than half its life. Okay, good. I'm glad it's the same rule, right? So I can, I can do three pips on the top and one on the bottom. So I know that it's the same rules as morale. It must... Um, let's see, it must, if the results are the boss, oh, the boss can flee? Wait, when do they lose their hit points then? When a boss loses more than half of its life points, its level drops by one. Oh, it both happens, and it must make a morale roll. Okay, got it. I haven't fought bosses that I just didn't destroy right away, uh, because of my amazing lightning bolt throwing hands with the, uh, the mage there. Okay, so the problem with the Medusa is this. Uh, well, let me do all the fun stuff first, right? So treasure plus one... Treasure plus one, Medusa, four life points, all care. Okay, so that's the suck part. Okay, rogues add half their level to the save. Oh, blessing though. Okay, so reaction. So it could ask for a bribe 
of 66 gold. We don't have any money. It could send us on a quest if we were lucky enough to roll a two. What do we think the odds of that happening are, huh? Um, well, one in six. Fight to the death or fight. Now, the difference between fight and fight to the death mean is that the fight to the death would skip the morale roll check. You would still have the leveling down, I, I imagine, but you would you would you would skip the morale check part. So. The question is, is do we want this thing to fight us right away? Oh, and we're in a corridor, so it's only going to have the two... Oh, jeez. It says all characters at the beginning of the battle. So so let's just see what happens here. So we have to make a save versus... Four, or be turned to stone. Well, we lost everybody. <laughs> So all we have is a lone rogue against a Medusa. And there's literally nothing we can do about it, right? A level 4 gaze attack, the rogue rolled a 5, and they're petrified. They are now out of the game until a blessing spell is cast on them. Now unfortunately, the uh, only person who can cast bless is the cleric. The wizard could, but we didn't take it. So it literally is the rogue versus the Medusa. Now we have two options here. We could try to run, and if we run away, maybe, right, we still have to roll then for every single room to fight a wandering monster. So we would have to roll one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rooms to get out. So seven not ones, right? And that's that's including the Medusa would attack us. Now our other option is to stand and fight. Now, our poor rogue was not fully healed. I probably should have bandaged up, you know, when I could have it, but now it's far too late. The rogue attacks at minus one and does not get her plus one attack, uh, you know, when she's because it's not a minion. This is a boss, right? So she does not get her plus one attack. So pretty much we have the opportunity here to just fight this guy. Um, and then even if we were to win, and I think we should try just for fun, even if we were to win the... Uh, 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 lone rogue can't carry a petrified character out of the dungeon. I, I believe, and it's it's described in the in the book somewhere. Like if you, like it takes two characters to carry a petrified person out of the dungeon, um, or if you escape, you can pay a cleric like a hundred gold to go in and rescue a guy or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly. There's a whole thing in the book for for how you can get your petrified guys out. In this case here. The only shot we have at it is to go ahead and try to kill it and get some loot, and that loot needs to be a whole other person who can cast Bless. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. So I think this run is pretty much over, but that's okay. The idea being that I, 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 I was able to share the experience of how this game more or less plays, and then we, we, you know, if, if we get out and we escape, great. We have a, a, a rogue that survived. And then we have to get all new characters, right? Now, lucky me, they're all level one. So, and, and this is my preferred party. So I can just uh, go ahead and reset everything and play again, which is probably what's going to happen. But I think for today's purposes, just so that we all understand how this game works, let's try to fight the Medusa, right? It's just, just a one-on-one -on -one slugfest. Now, uh, the Medusa was not a wandering monster, so it did not get the jump on us, right? We found it in the corridor, right? We rolled an 11, right? So boss on the, on the, on the table. So a four, and I guess we're going to go ahead and attack at minus one, <laughs> which means it's a what? A four, so we have to roll a five or six to hit. We roll a four, meaning we didn't hit. There's no way that I can finagle a plus one in any way. So now it has to roll to hit, or no, I roll a defense. So then it attempts to attack me, and it's a what? It's a four, meaning I have to roll a five. Now the good news is I have plus two on my defense because I have light armor and we add our level to it. So we're trying to roll a three or better, right? Because we need we need a five or six to save. So we need a three, uh, three, four, five. We need a three plus two is a five. So a three or better to save, right? So we got a three. Four five, so we rolled we rolled higher, right? So I think I think we're good there. Um, then we get to attack back. This is just going to be a slog, right? So now we have to roll. What did I say? A, a five or six to hit. We missed, and then it's a uh, it's a. Uh, I'm going to forget this. So it's five or six to hit, <laughs> and a three to not get hit. 
There we go. Okay, so now it's going to attempt to hit me. I need a three or better. Ooh, and I failed, so I got hit for once. Now, that doesn't mean that you're petrified or anything. It just means that we lose a hit point. The, the, the gaze only happens immediately, okay? So this Medusa is just taking us to task here. So now we need a five or six to hit, and we missed. So now it, we need a three or better to dodge. Oh, we... we <laughs> The, this party was not long for this world. I'll t I tried, guys. I really did. Okay, so we're going to try to attack again with a five or a six. Oh, don't keep me waiting. No, we're going to roll a two. We missed. And now we need a three or better to not get hit. And Oh, we didn't get hit, so we're going to attack again. Attack is a five or a six. No, we missed. It attacks. We need a three or better. Oh, my God. Did I roll all three ones? So, you know, surrounded by her comrades... In the close confines of a corridor that was made even smaller, because she would have been in the back anyway, so I don't know how you fight a Medusa with two two blocks of stone in front of you. Uh, maybe they fell over and she climbed on top and thought she could save him, but, you know, maybe standing on your, your dead comrade, you know, your petrified comrade's corpse is rocky, so you are you kept rolling ones on your defense check, and you were killed by the Medusa. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm actually happy that I didn't get killed by invisible goblins. So I initially planned, and I had said this, I think, um, that I was going to do a lot of talking about this after the fact because I recorded it ahead of time, but it didn't exactly go the way I imagined it would go. So let's, let's, let's just talk about this for a little bit. Um, the, the, uh, basically the, we had a, we had a total party kill, right? That's fine. That's fine. It's easy to reset when everybody's level one. No big deal. We just, we just get a whole new monster sheet and erase all those or what, what have you. No big deal. Um, this, this is the party I like, but that doesn't mean there's not plenty of other character classes in here. There are other books with er other character classes in there as well. One of the problems I had trying to learn how to play this game is this book. This book is a nightmare to navigate. Nothing is where it feels like it needs to be. And so creating things like all of this, I had to just like cut and paste stuff together. This isn't in the book. That's why everything's different sizes. I was just copying stuff and dropping it into a picture and trying to arrange stuff to where it would help me to find. Like I have a button here that says treasure and traps. And then I have a button that says epic treasure and magic treasure for this. Maybe I should just have a treasure one. I, at the time, in, in the order it is, I didn't realize it, but that'd be a better treasure button for me, but then I'd, I'd have what? Treasure and hidden treasure issues? I'm more likely only going to be rolling on treasure, and then I needed the random spell table I had to find somewhere else, uh, because you have to do that once in a while, but you also need that when you're doing this on the spells, so I, I had to put it in two different places. It's just, the, the book is a nightmare. The, uh, <laughs> it really is. And my understanding is there was supposed to be a like complete rewrite of the book to square away some of the rules that are a little squirrely and everything, but um, that hasn't happened. I don't know exactly why. I, I believe it's due to real-world things uh, going on. I think I read somewhere that you know the guy at the time has been in Ukraine for the last like uh, over a year, and, well, at this time in 2023... Uh, they're not there anymore, so you know some some stuff is is uh, bad happening over there with Russia invading Ukraine, uh, and so obviously games are not of the utmost importance, right? And and so who knows what's going on with all that right now? I certainly do not. But my understanding was there was supposed to be for the last like two years they were working on a rewrite, and it's all gone now, which is a, a shame. They I think it's one dude, right? Oh, a Andre maybe I think is the name. I can't remember now. Uh, so anyway, uh, there's there's. A lot to be desired in this book, and I believe this only goes up to like level four, and then you have to buy a different book for five to nine, and then a different book for ten to twenty, I think, for epic encounters. But then there's another book called like Fiendish Foes or something, where it's a whole, it like replaces some of these tables, which I'm going to look into because I absolutely hate the weird creature table, because... I tried to play this game three times before today, and I ran into a situation... I had the exact same party makeup. Here was after three dungeons worth of, of, of what I fought and killed. My characters, I thought were... Okay, so, so dungeon number one was this guy, right? Oh, dungeon number one was this guy. I came in. I fought some giant centipedes over here. This is day one. This was, look, at December 1st, 2023. Today is December 5th, okay? So I'm doing the fourth run in five days I've ever played this, right? I came up here. I went all the way to the end. I found a whole bunch of nothing. I killed some mushroom dudes, came down here, found a clue. That was exciting. 
I came up here, a whole bunch of nothing, and I don't have all my little guys, I don't think I, oh, I guess maybe I do. Uh, anyway, up here, I rolled to the invisible, or the um, weird creatures chart, right, or whatever it's called, weird, weird monsters table, and I rolled a six, and I want you to look at invisible gremlins, right? Um, oh, I wrote, I wrote goblins, like, every single time. It's gremlins, how funny. Uh, a band of gremlins steal d6 plus three objects from the party. I think that first one was seven, I think. Uh, it's How funny, I wrote goblins, it's gremlins. You must surrender objects from any of your characters in this order of preference. All your magic items go first, followed by any of your scrolls, then your potions, then all of your weapons, and then gems, and then coins in bundles of ten gold points each. So, er, uh, yeah, uh, gold pieces, rather. So, all I remember is that I was left with eight gold pieces, and I was just standing there, like, with nothing all of a sudden. Um, so, on the upside... If the grim, it says if the gremlins steal all of your equipment. Now I have a hard time with that too. Does that mean like armor? I don't think so. I think it's just that list, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I can't tell. It's not written clearly enough. It says they leave. They will leave you a thank you message that counts as a clue. The gremlins have no combat stats because it's impossible to fight them, and encountering them gives you no experience roll. Meaning. Like you're just you're just you're just all of a sudden screwed. Just like oh hey you rolled a six too bad lol now you gotta leave. So then you have to leave with no weapons and that's put you now I couldn't find unarmed combat rules anywhere but I found that somebody had found in a different book that you're at uh, like negative two. Okay great so I'm at negative two for for combat so. I take one room. I take a step to a room down, and I get attacked. And you have to roll a d6 every time you go to a room that you you previously were in, right? I rolled a one. Wandering creature. Boom! It's a boss. What is it? Boom! It's a Medusa. Turned to stone. Now I got lucky. I happened to be able to to do the blessing and get everybody out once we killed the Medusa, and then I was able to run out of the dungeon. So, but but then I had no gold and I had no weapon. So I just had to kind of like fudge it and say, okay. Well, we're going to keep our, our, our characters and what happened to them, and they're going to go to the town, right, the, the, this, this town that doesn't exist that in my head I'm saying is outside of the dungeon, and I'm going to say uh, they, they told the story of the Medusa to the people, um, and then, then they were naked, you know, <laughs> they lost all their stuff, and the townsfolk gave them their starting weapons back, since that's, that's all we really lost that I was bummed about because otherwise that whole that's a that's that's a TPK as far as I'm concerned. You have to start over. You have no money. You have nothing you can sell to buy weapons. What's the point, right? So so okay, fine. I just I just I got all my my starting basic weapons back. That's 22 gold with with the stuff, right? Uh, so I went to dungeon number two. I went back in, and this time and this is awesome. By the way, I was trying to find like what I liked best. I mean, obviously this is amazing, but I didn't have this when I started. I just got this. Um, but these are two uh, uh, of these glued together, right? They're graph paper uh, index cards. I just glued them together with some little PVA glue, and they, they, they're they fantastic. And it's like the perfect size, because I want everything small, right? I, I can fit this with me, which I think is fantastic. You know, if you have it in the car or whatever, that's why all my other little sheets here are so small. Uh, but then I was sitting at home at the kitchen table. My daughter was doing some like homework, and so I had a bigger sheet of paper. So I printed this out, and I thought, let's have at it. Dungeon number two, next day. So here we go. I went in. I killed some rats and some trolls and fungi folk, and then some more trolls, and then a giant, some more giant centipedes. And I found a puzzle room, which was cool. And our mage solved the puzzle. And then we found some treasure just laying on the floor. Four gold pieces. Yay! There was a closet. It was actually a room. A closet I opened up, essentially, because it doesn't fit on there, right? Uh, and it was a giant spider that I killed. Cool. I come down a room. I fight some skeletons. And then there's another little closet. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be smart. We're going to do this whole side of the dungeon. Then we're going to travel back to this part and tra travel this side of the dungeon, right? Or, or go up here maybe and come out this way i fought some skeletons and i went into this room over here and it's invisible i wrote goblins there too how funny it's invisible gremlins again so all of a sudden again i lost all my stuff and i thought this sucks all because i rolled a six you have no save there's nothing you can do you just ha <laughs> ha you lose all your stuff. And and I don't like that. And then maybe some people absolutely adore it. Maybe some people think that is just the bee's knees to lose all your stuff. And, oh no, what do you do now? All of a sudden it's a real adventure. You're in the dungeon with no gear. That sucks to me because these kinds of games are all about killing things, taking their loot, completing quests, right? And, and losing stuff is fine. Losing stuff because it breaks is one thing. Like the way D100 does <laughs> everything is amazing to me. Like that's, that's the, just amazing. It's perfect for what I'm looking for. 
um, except for the, the the investments. That's the only thing I don't like. I'm just scrapping that. I just don't like it. it just It's just not what I want. So I'm just going to, you know, not do it um, because you can not invest anything and then you can just ignore it. It's great. It's not like it's not even like I'm house ruling it. I'm just not doing it. Um, so but this you're just it's it's there. You have a D6 shot of just, you know, wiping your whole adventure because you rolled a six. It just I don't like it. Um, now, how do you fix that? Well, you have backups of all your gear. Great. That isn't free, and they would have stolen anyway because I rolled nine this time, right? So uh, I just, again, I don't like it. I think it's dumb, and frankly, I think it's bad design. Rolling a die that you have no, like there's no save. If, it, if there was a save, that'd be a little better, or something else, like, oh, it's the gremlins. Now here's a separate chart, and you lose this, that, or the other, or something, not just a completely, ha, 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 you're screwed. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's a balancing thing. Maybe it's to the point where it's like, oh, we're all level four. We have a bunch of magic gear. We're amazing. Well, I don't see how that's great because we just lost a fireball staff that go, you can only use twice. So I don't think you're ever that powerful, right? I, I, I just, I don't know. So anyway, I didn't enjoy it. So I thought I got this so I can play here and record it and everybody can see how awesome this will be. So I got this. I set it up and it's unfortunate. This whole terrain case thing, this D&D terrain case thing, is garbage for the 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 value is sixty five dollars like the, the suggested retail price is sixty five dollars. These are garbage. They're all warped and puffy in the middle a little bit. Um, it also comes with like a fold out thing, and they are it's just a little bit too small. It's like this. It's so close to being perfect for four against darkness, but it's just quite not. It would still work fine, but you're missing like three or four rows. I can't remember now, like one row off the top and three off the side maybe. So it's probably perfectly fine, but I wanted to make sure I had the 28 by 20 that is recommended here. So that's why I'm using these. It's fine. Uh, then it comes with some little cling things, which whatever, I'm sure they're fine. If I found a, a fountain in here somewhere, I probably would have gone to go see if I could find a fountain. It, it's fine because I paid 20 bucks for it. But any more than that, absolutely the heck not. Go find something else. But but for 20 bucks, this is gonna, gonna do what I want it to do. Uh, so uh, then I set it up and I thought, I'm gonna play this again. And I jumped into my very third combat. I wrote goblins again, how funny. And you can see what I did here. I entered in the bottom center down there. I came up and I fought a minotaur right away. I went over to the right and it was an empty room, nothing there. I fought some centipedes in a corridor. I came back. No wandering monsters. Good deal. I walked into an empty corridor, and at the end of the corridor, you know, you've got candles lit and a pentagram or whatever. It's a cursed altar. There's just bodies of things hanging off the ceiling and blood, and it stinks. My rogue got cursed by going into that room and lost one defense permanently. So, or not permanently, but like, you know, it was cursed. So minus one defense because you're cursed. Luckily, the uh, uh, cleric cast the blessing spell and removed the curse. We ventured on. We fought nine goblins in that little tiny room there. It was quite the thing. Then, into that little room up top, we fought something else, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, it was, oh seven goblins, actually. Yeah, I have the sheet. It was seven goblins. Okay. I was afraid of that little closet, you know, because the other little closets were spiders and gremlins, right? So I walk out into the room with nine, the bodies of nine dead goblins, and what do I find? A wandering Medusa. Fabulous. Okay, so what happened? The rogue and the wizard got turned to stone. Uh, we managed to kill the Medusa, but then both casts. I rolled a one and a two. Oh, I don't have my character sheets. Where is it? Oh, I don't have it. Uh, but my, at this point, my characters were, were a little burly, I felt. I, I, I think they were, I, I think I had a level, I think they're all level two and like one or two level threes. Uh, just because I was just like pretending I was going out of town and getting my gear back and just keeping myself, just to familiarize myself with the, with the way the game plays. So then I leave, I, I killed the Medusa. I go with only two characters, we're walking out now. Uh, I walk down to the um, cursed altar room. There was no wandering creatures there. I wander into the room with the Minotaur's body. And what's in there? A wandering ogre, probably wondering what happened to the Minotaur, attacked my dwarf and cleric. Well, I got lucky because those are my two strongest characters. Whooped that ogre. Great. I, I go to the last room, the entrance of the place. And there's nothing in there when you start the game. But, you know, it's like a room. So I, I assume it's not always clear. I have to roll on the wandering monsters. Maybe they came close to the entrance, right? Guess what? Invisible goblins. My third game... Goblins. I said it again. Gremlins. I keep saying that. Invisible gremlins. Third game in a row with invisible gremlins stole all the stuff off those two characters just as we were trying to leave anyway. 
And that was it. I was so crushed. I didn't play yesterday, right? Um, and I just was like, well, maybe we'll just put this on hold <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll play play again here uh, and record it and see how it goes. And hey, it wasn't Invisible Gremlins. We just got killed, uh, which is fine. That's great. That's okay. You know, that's it's, it's, it's fun. Um, but I think that anybody wanting to get into this has their work cut out for them. This is one of those things... I feel like Arkham Horror, the card game, is a game that you really have to put a lot of effort into up front to understand it. Like, you just have all these cards. You don't know what they do, what you can use, what you can't use. You don't know what goes where. You can't find Lita Chandler anywhere in there. Uh, <laughs> it's just a mess. You have to do a lot of work. So I've, 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 I've put days into trying to figure this game out, and I think I've got it mostly down, at least as far as the base game book. But uh, my understanding is that there are a load of uh, companion books that you can get for this. And one of them is, I mean, they're like two bucks. If you head on over to like drive through RPG, you can get the PDF for $2 and, and, and have like a level of, you know, an adventure for characters levels one to three. So I think that this isn't what I like. I think that this doesn't give me what I want. I don't think that this is, this is what I'm looking for. Like D100 Dungeon in its one book contains everything I wanted. Anything after that, the world book, the, the dragon armor thing, like all of that stuff, I bet's incredible. And I'm going to check it out one of these days. But just the D100 dungeon book itself, it's, it's all I needed. 50 different quests, three different ways to, to go, loads of tables that are bigger than just D6s. They're D100 tables, right? In fact, my only complaint on that is like the find table, I think. Whatever one I'm always breaking my armor on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, squeezing through a crevice, right? Um, it's um, uh, that that table was replaced in a later book. I found out. I don't know which book, but I, I know that it was replaced in one of the books. I saw it, uh, so that's that's great because I, I definitely want to replace the table I've been using with the, with that table. So I've got more D100 to buy, which is great. But but I don't need to. You only need the D100 book. This the D100 dungeon book. This. I don't feel like this is offering me what I want. Now, maybe you just want these one-off little dungeons or whatever, and, and maybe you go in just to, to try, uh, you know, maybe all your guys get to level two or three or four, and you get to just romp through the dungeon. Great. It's not sitting right with me for whatever reason. And so I think this is not what I'm looking for, right? And this is only like 12, 13 bucks I think I paid for it, right? You can get the PDF for probably less. However, there is... A load of things, and I, I apologize. I don't have it right in front of me, but I bet I ha, wrong button. I bet I can real fast. We go to the the game their website right here, GanishaGames.net. Right, so you you go here and you click on Four Against Darkness, and like look at all this stuff you can get. Now, the word of warning on this is is that some of these are a little explicit, and they are I think god i don't know notice the titles are all different colors that's different authors and so the gold ones are from the original author like this one here i believe uh they're all from the original author like that color gold is the original author and that those those were those but then there's like these red ones not from them orange probably not from them white most definitely not right i imagine i think that's the trick to it is figuring out who wrote what and what you like and there's one of these that i believe people are kind of upset about uh you know a certain group of people don't want any kind of a explicit content or anything or adult themes or whatever and i believe that one of these authors um, does go down that road and so once you figure that out just ignore that color and go shopping otherwise so fiendish in fact i think it's pink maybe because i believe that this book written by me i might be wrong so don't 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 take that uh for certain um, but i believe this is a must-have i believe i mean obviously this book is a must-have fiendish foes i believe is is one of the list of the must-haves and then i think it's the red one this one right here with the axe dude Four Against the Abyss is the other must-have book. Everything I ran into said, get those three books to start. Now, unfortunately, I only got this one because I thought, oh, well, I'll get those real soon after checking this out. I might have to get them sooner than I thought, but I also want to check out uh, an actual adventure because I think that's probably where this system is really good for me. Maybe for you, you've got this worked out to run random dungeons using a different dungeon generator or, you know, a deck of many dungeons or whatever it is that you have worked out. Your homebrew thing is not my concern, right? Your, your, your tack together, whatever, that's great. I'm glad it works for you. This needs to have babies with white box 
or Cairn or something for me and D100 or, or, or 2D6 dungeon, by the way. You know, like, like, like there's a way to make this work for me, and but this one book isn't it. I don't know what book I need uh, or books. I don't know what it is I'm missing, but I'm starting to get the impression now that, like, could I do this many times? No, I'm, I'm tired of it after four times. I'm not, it's fine. But it's not what I'm looking for, right? D100 Dungeon, on the other hand, I got 50 different things to do. That's amazing. That's exactly what I want, right? That's cool. And if you fail it, it's something else different you're doing next time, right? That's phenomenal. Not just kind of the same thing, go in and kill the boss. This is like the bones of something great. So getting into this now is very difficult because I just don't know what I'm looking at. As a newbie into this, I don't know what I'm, I'm here to do. And I don't see the one I'm looking for specifically. But there's one called like... It's on D100. Oh, no, it's this one right here. This is the one I was looking for, right? So this this one is... Oh, ooh, that might not be written by the guy. But I did happen to come across this one. A three-session solo adventure, right? And this one says that it's for... Oh, can you see it? You can't. It's only 21 pages long, but on the cover... Oh, I can't zoom in. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it says for adventures of level one or two right there, right? So that, to me, that's the thing to get. And look, it's two bucks. So I'm already in 14 bucks. I know the system, I think, more or less well enough now. Let's go to this. I, so this is what I want to check out. I don't think this is what I'm looking for. I think that is what I'm looking for. And Lord help me, if I have a ball of a time with the Caves of the Kobold Slave Masters, I'm screwed. Because then I got to buy all the books, right? Because then I know the adventures in there are what make it great. Right, so that's 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 what I have to say about that. And this book, if I haven't drilled it into your head, this is a mess. Trying to find the information is a disaster. Go to the internet, hop on Board Game Geek. I don't know, pop it into Google. Find yourself somebody else's character sheets. Right, the one in the book is garbage. <laughs> find somebody else's. Um, oh, I don't have it. Uh, somebody else's uh, enemy kill sheet. This thing here. This thing, phenomenal, right? Not perfect, but really close, right? As close as we're going to get. Uh, then find somebody's this, whatever this page came from. I think it was in somebody's like group of stuff. This is with it, right? Print it out full size, whatever you want. I, 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 I can't complain about the system. What I can complain about is the way this book is put together and that it needs more. And so I just, that's, that's kind of where I am with this is I'm not sure what to make of it. So um, I, um, I'm also a big fan of actual physical printed stuff and getting a PDF of that is not on the list of things I want to do. I want to get a print of it. So I think if you go to like, I think even drive through RPG doesn't have a print of the Kobold Slave Masters. I think you have to go to like uh, Lulu, uh, like L U L U.com, I think is the site. Uh, or you need to go to I mean, like Amazon has a print on demand service for a lot of stuff, but I have varying degrees of success with some of that. I'd be curious if any of you have the version of Cairn or the Cairn Bestiary from the Amazon print on demand. My white box is from there and it's super high quality. My Cairn stuff, I don't even, it's like weird, the cover, I don't know. Anyway, so that's what I think about this. I'm probably gonna try to check out this Caves of the Kobold Slave Masters because, because this is fun. But I've done the same exact thing four times in, in five days here, and I'm not so sure it's offering me what I want. Like, that's okay, but why am I not playing something way better, like D100 Dungeon? Now, that said, I'm going to stop talking about this for a minute, okay? Uh, let's let's just do a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of covering this. So this is what I'm talking about if you don't know when I say D100 Dungeon. This is what I was looking for when I was looking for a solo dungeon crawl, right? I had no idea what existed out in the world. I kept getting recommended 4 Against Darkness and D100 Dungeon, and there's a newcomer. Um, and so anyway, I went with D100 Dungeon. There was just something about it I liked uh, before I'd ever seen it. So I went ahead and I bought this, which is version 3. I think they're on 3.2 now, but that's what you get when you buy the PDF or the printed book from drivethroughrpg.com. And I love it. It's phenomenal. It's exactly what I want in a single book. And there's seven books total if you want to add a bunch of stuff to it, including book six, a world builder. Then there's this, which I've never played. I know almost nothing about it, but other than a handful of things. So number one, it's brand new. This is the newcomer onto the solo dungeon crawl scene, right? People seem to love it. And it sounds right up my alley. You're, 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 you got your two D6s here, and you know even your rooms. What I, what I, one of the things I really like is that when you roll the dice, they are, uh, you know, how this, they're the dimensions of the room, right? You don't have a chart, and I'm not constantly looking up what a room is shaped like. You just, you just, oh, it's a four by three or whatever, right? Like so, you can, you can just create a whatever. That's kind of awesome, right? Um, that's, that's. I don't know too much about this. I don't have it yet. So here's the deal. 
2D6 Realm is currently, as in right this second, December 5th, 2023, on Kickstarter. You can go there and get yourself a bundle pack uh, of, of 2D6 Dungeon and 2D6 Realm and, and the Layers expansion and the, the Haunted House and all this stuff for, for, for the least you can pay. And you can get the PDF along with the, the, the different various uh, versions of the books. Now, there is a soft cover. There's a spiral bound and the faux leather covers. I believe that's what exists. There might even be another one in there. I don't know. Uh, so you can get whatever you want. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to play the, it immediately. And if I if I pledged for like all the things, I would have to wait until the campaign ends to get the PDF. And I'm impatient. So what I did was I pledged for the new stuff, uh, the Omnibus and the Realms book. And that's it which come with the PDF. So I'm going to get the PDF soon, but I'm going to get the physical printed uh, books later, which is fine. But if you go to their website, drgames.co.uk, I believe, you can get all you can get the 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 2D6 dungeon immediately, which and it was like 25 bucks shipped to the US, right? So uh, I got the PDF already because that you get immediately. However, I, I'm, I need I need a physical book. I got to pace around the house and read the book. Okay, so that's just how I learn. So I, I um, that book should arrive in probably the next week, which is great. But I already have the PDF. But I don't do well without like sitting at a computer trying to learn rules doesn't work for me. Okay, so uh, the book is on the way, but you get the PDF with the purchase of the book. So I got the soft cover book on the way from the UK, and then the other order is out there. So I'm hoping that within a week or two. I can actually check out 2D6 Dungeon and, and really see what I think of all three of these uh, these these solo dungeon crawl adventure things. So I've, I'm really curious now that I've had a chance to play this four times and it didn't just end in Invisible Gremlins to see what these adventures are like because I'm, I'm really starting to think that with a little bit of guidance, these are way better, like, or this is way better. Um, but on the other hand, you know, you, you can't play them all, right? At some point, you, you run out of time. You run out of time, and you can't play every single game, and you might just have to put a stake in the ground. So that's I'm kind of experimenting with all three of these to just see what I like the most, and um, at least as what I've seen right now, um, you know, uh, Four Against Darkness needs some some love. So I don't know. I'm going to go check something out, see how I can make that happen, and get my hands on some more for it. Maybe I'll just have to print out the slave dungeon thing or whatever but uh thanks for watching in this fun little dungeon run we had just here that was just down one shot corridor it looks like how funny maybe we'll try one more of these just to just to see how different it goes before we do anything else like camp like uh the the kobold thing right maybe we do it just just two plays so that you can see it since i did the other ones off camera just so we can get a feel for how it can be vastly different that's what i want to do here is show how things are multiple times. I don't want to play something just once. Now, once in a while that happens, but I try not to. I try to play things more and more and more so we can see how they, they evolve, um, you know, through multiple plays and, and see how different things are and if they're worth your money. So I've got I've got some my work cut out for me on this guy here. So until next time, remember, um, <laughs> uh, boy, that's uh, I almost said something completely different there that I used to say all the time. How funny. Uh, anyway, games are made for everyone's recreation. I'll see you later.